What's going on guys? Joey here. I am in the car for this one, so hopefully it doesn't sound too bad, but I've been thinking about making this video for a while and it's just like, okay, I never have time to just sit down and do it. I'm going to do it now because I'm driving and my mind is not preoccupied other than keeping my eye on the road. So today I wanted to talk about uh, when you're planning your training with RPE or should you plan your training with RPE? How do RPE progressions work? Things like that. I won't be able to go super, super into detail. That's, uh, a topic we can, I usually go way more into this topic on my workshops. By the way, I was planning one for December 30th, but a lot of people had expressed to me that they had plans for New Year's, and it would interfere with that date, so I'm probably going to move it. I tried to get one in last minute, um, but I think we'll probably move it for maybe the week after or the week after that, maybe mid-January. So if you're interested in a programming workshop, let me know. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, I had a lifter ask me about RPE, and they were asking me, like, okay, like, what should I be you know, thinking about hitting on week three, week four, whatever, right? And I just, it made me think about, okay, so this guy might be, um, you know, used to training a different way. Maybe he's used to percentages. Maybe he's used to having rates, weights written out. Um, and, you know, that can kind of help him gauge as he's leading into, you know, a certain week. Now, we could get into the issues with, like, having percentages or written weights, um, pros and cons, things like that, but that could be another video. But basically, if you're coming over from that kind of thought process, um, you know, typically just to, like, make it simple for you guys, when it comes to planning my lifters' progressions, all, all I need to make sure that's happening is that they're, they are growing from their training, and right before the meet, we are putting them in a position to be peaked for that meet, and that the work that we're doing leading into the meet is meaningful and will lead to, you know, progression. Um, some ways to kind of guarantee this is making sure that your, like, meets are spread out far enough. Uh, you know, I would say, like, four months is pretty pretty good amount of time to put a significant uh when I say significant, it's like, you know, like, it's relative, right? So you're going to make pro – you should be making progress every four to six months at least, depending on your um, experience levels. If you're really new, you could do that much faster. But if you spread your meets out enough, then you can plan for, like, yeah, we should be able to beat some numbers. There's a lot of other factors that go into it. But when it comes to using RPE in your training – um, you know, I always tell people that the right answer to your question is like, what weight should I be thinking about hitting, um, you know, on a specific week? Now, if I know the lifter really well, I could probably tell them, just like tell them straight up. If we're still kind of like growing or there's a lot of variables like in their training at the moment, I would say that the right answer is going to be to take what you have on that day that is within the RPE that's given to you. And I know that's like not an exciting answer, but you're making sure that like, I think some people think of like an RPE eight is like, Oh, I got to max out or like, I got to hit something that's like really heavy. Not really. Um, and it's not a set weight. So for example, if your max was 500 pounds on a good day, your RPE eight is probably going to be around, 480 ish, maybe, right? 475 or something like that. Um, on a good day. Now, if you take that weight, which, and it moves like a six, then you're, you know, then you should go up and your 500 might become your RP8, right? It's all about what you're feeling on that day. And the same thing works in the opposite. So you can't, I mean, I don't know what they have going on. They might eat a bunch on Christmas. They might get really good sleep. They might not have school, and they might exceed the number that I give them. Um, typically, not not typically, but, like, sometimes if I am available, they might DM me and say, Yo, Joey, I'm at the gym right now. Things are feeling either really, really good or really, really bad. 
not really, really bad because I try to make sure that if we do feel bad, it's very temporary, which is okay. You can have fatigue. You need fatigue. Shouldn't be super afraid of it. It's not the end of the world. Um, but you don't want to be in that super suppressed state for too long. Um, but yeah, like let's say they hit me up, you know, th- this is something that I try to teach them to do on their own because the more that they have, the better and more bases that we're going to be able to cover, um, in our training together. Uh, but basically I'll look at their, and they should do this too. They should look at their last warm ups, like leading into a weight that is, you know, let's use that 475 number, right? Or that 480 number. Uh, let's say they get to about 425, 450, something like that. If it's moving better or worse than it normally would, then that is going to help us kind of figure out, okay, what are we going to hit on the day? And this is assuming that your technique is good. This is assuming, you know, that your form is good and that you're not, um, you know, you're not being overly ambitious or like severely undershooting. Some lifters, um, I have found that for whatever reason, unless they really have like somebody there helping them or unless they, maybe it's just a bad day. Maybe they're just not present. They aren't aware. They're not paying attention, right? So they're just kind of like lifting and they don't really know that they just like get to a weight and they're like, Oh dang, this weight is heavy. Like I didn't even, re- I don't even remember my last warm ups because I was just kind of like zoning out, just like going through the motions, right? But you got to kind of be a little bit present. And if you are aware of like how you're feeling, and this is something that my best lifters and myself and like, you know, just more experienced lifters that are with me, I have guys who have pretty good numbers. They're not in the, they're not even in the top 10, right? Um, but they're pretty good and they're older. Maybe they have a family and they do this really, really well. Well, like they'll kind of like warm up and they'll say like, okay, you know, I just use me as an example. If I'm warming up and 585 feels a certain way on squats, I know like, oh, okay, my top single for today is only going to be 635 or I, or I might not, it might not even like register on this RPE scale. I'll be like, oh my God, I got some juice today. Right. And then I might, I might jump to 675 if I'm feeling that good or I might go, you know, usually I'll go 635 because like maybe I have some tight hips and I want to warm up a little bit more. Take the 635, smoke that, take the 675, smoke that. Okay. That means, all right, I got something. I got something good today. You know what I mean? But those last warm-ups, like, and I'll know around 600 pounds, like, damn, I feel really, really good or I feel really, really bad. Um, so you want to, especially, like, the longer you get in your career, like, the more you're doing this, you're going to start to understand, like, what you need as a lifter, what weight ranges you should be operating in and things like that. Um, and it just kind of comes with time. But, like, communication with your coach can definitely help you. And like I said, like you can try to plan ahead. Like, like if you're coming off a deload, you know that you should start to feel a little bit better, right? So you can start to say, okay, I know that after my deloads, when my fatigue is down, that's a pretty big variable, um, that we're kind of like altering to get me to perform better. I should be capable of something within this range. If that's the case, um, then you can kind of say, all right, I don't know if, you know, coach wants me to be absolute maxed out, going to hit PR guaranteed, or just genuinely feeling better than I would normally in training. So instead of trying to find, like, a, if I could, like, summarize the video. Sorry, you're going to hear some strange noises right now as I get my t- ticket for the for the gym. Because you need a ticket to get in this parking structure. Um as you're planning, you know, your progressions with your RPE, and like I said, like, you don't really need to plan them. You just kind of need to treat it as a, on a more micro level so you're you're paying attention to what's happening day to day, and that's creating a map over time um, as opposed to, you know, as, a, as opposed to, sorry, driving, um, like, thinking so far out, that's like where you need to be exactly. Um, You want to be within a general range, right? So imagine you have like your numbers on like a little, like a heat map, right? You have towards the top of the heat map is like red and the bottom of the heat map is green. You know that after a deload, you're going to be like in the red to orange range, right? So you're going to be, you know, 
a little bit, like you're going to be running hot a little bit, you might be able to hit something good. And when fatigue is really high, you know, Phil Lifter says, like, how am I going to be feeling week four if it's like our first block together or an intro block and I'm building them up for four weeks and we're adding volume and things are getting more difficult progressively, they're, they're not going to be lifting like super heavy weight. I mean, they might, I mean, you might recover through it and you might be, um, do, you know, we might be dosing stress just enough to the point where you can sort of add, uh, to your, you know, you're getting better as the weeks go on. Sometimes it works out that way. It just kind of depends. Um, but I will, I will, you, let's say I know lifter really well. I'm, I'm going to say like, okay, like this, this lifter week four, they're going to have fatigue. They're not going to feel really good. Um, so they need to, you know, they need to kind of understand that. Uh, and then referring to that heat map, maybe they're more in the orange to yellow region, right? Um, I mean, you could flip it around too. You could say green. You guys get what I'm saying. But the point is, um, and this is something, this is giving me ideas for the workshop. Uh, the point is you want to be able to know where your ranges should be because when we train RPE, we're not, we don't need to be perfect. We just need to be like within range. Your body is not going to know the difference between, you know, like if you think of like a, a, a set of, you know, um, a set with like 500 pounds and you're doing a five by five, like whatever that tonnage is, right? You, you, whether or not that's like a little bit more or a little bit less, it's so astronomically like minute, it's not really that big of a deal. And as long as you are like over time, like if you back out and you look at the macro structure of your training and see the kind of weights you're lifting, if like every six months you're noticing like, or like maybe like 16 weeks, you're looking at like, okay, at the beginning of this 16 week period, um, for that type of a block, I was using this kind of training and then for this kind of training or in this kind of block i was using um you know i was using these kind of weights you want to make sure that over time that's gradually going up um that's the way that i've done it and it's been very effective if you really look if you if you want to look at it that way the difference between the blocks is not really that different it's just the weights are different you're getting more specific so or so but it's kind of like tricking you to think that you're doing something different also like for mental purposes it's kind of boring when you're just doing the same thing all the time. So we try to make you at least feel like you're doing something different. You know, powerlifting is a very, I mean, you're just doing the same stuff, uh, trying to get better at the same three lifts over and over and over. Um, so, you know, there is going to be aspects of, of boringness in there. It's also skills, you know, you're practicing things, repetition, stuff like that. So anyway, I got, I hope you guys enjoyed my talk. <laughs> um, if you guys are interested in a workshop, just let me know in the comments or you can email me at flextsys at gmail.com and just say, hey, I'm interested. Uh, once I do decide on a day, a date, uh, I will contact you and let you guys know. Some of you already did, so no worries. I have your stuff. Um, that's flex with two X's, tsys at gmail.com. Um, we're at, like, we could do, way more in-depth uh, stuff like this. I show programs. I go into details. You guys already know what's up for those of you that have taken it before. Um, but yeah, uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year's coming into 2024. I got some really good news recently about me and my ability to coach at certain meets. I'm really happy about that. Um, and I feel that 2024 is almost going to be a return to form turn to form anyway guys thank you so much um it's been a crazy year i'll see you guys in the next one peace